Hello. In this video, I'll be talking about lambda fudge cloning vectors. In my earlier video, I have talked about plasmid as cloning vectors. Now, lambda fudge is a different cloning vector type. Now, this whole system is dependent upon the fudge vector, the fudge vector lambda. Now, if you know the life cycle of a phage vector, it could be different. Like one could be lytic cycle, one could be lysogenic cycle. Now you can see if you follow the sequence A, B, C, D here, you can see the lysogenic cycle, the genomic DNA of the fudge is getting integrated into the bacterial genome and it can be pop propagated uh, throughout several generations. So lambda fudge can integrate their genome into the bacterial genome. Now that means the lambda fudge could be easily grown on bacterial colonies. Now, let me talk about some genomic features of lambda fudge. Then we can appreciate how this cloning system can work. So, lambda fudge has a genome size of roughly 50 kilobase pairs. Now, a few interesting facts ab about their genome is, now one third of the genome is basically junk. So, it's not necessary for fudge propagation or its essential lifestyle. And second thing is, only if the genome size reach 40 to 53, 53 kilobase pairs, only then the packing take place. Otherwise, packing does not take place. So here is lambda fudge genome. So what we do in this lambda fudge cloning vector is, so there is a, a genomic region known as stuffer fragment that is like junk. We don't need it and lambda fudge doesn't need it for its survival. So it can be easily cut out. And in the place of that junk, you can insert your DNA of interest, which you want to clone. In this particular sequence, the blue DNA is the gene of interest or the DNA of interest that we want to clone. Now, this whole fra fragment can be automatically packaged into the fudge vector if it reach the proper size. In this particular example, the bottom one could be only packaged because it has attained the proper size. Other two fragments, which are kind of non recombinant and has not uh, reached the proper size, won't be packaged. So, the packaging and the I mean, it, it, it is like a lot easier than screening bacterial colonies. Now, here, every only recombinant colonies would be formed, I mean, only recombinant uh, uh, fudge would be produced, nothing else would be produced because otherwise it won't be packaged inside the fudge. Now, then, once the uh, DNA is packaged into the fudge. Now it would be grown on E. coli plate and plaques would be counted. Now the only problem, I mean this is a super convenient method because in plasmid we can only clone up till 10 kb whereas in case of lambda fudge vector we can kind of clone 23 kilobase pairs which is a lot more. So the carrying capacity of lambda fudge vector is way more than the plasmid. So that's the advantage of the lambda fudge cloning system. But only disadvantage that we can think of is like it's a little bit harder to grow them in bulk. But with advancement in cloning technology and uh, we can grow them on bacteria. So that disadvantage is also nullified. And as a reason, in late 1990s and 1980s, people have vigorously used lambda fudge uh, modified lambda fudge vectors for cdna library or genomic dna library so in my other videos i'll be talking about those lambda fudge series and how they're used to make cdn expression libraries and all so if you like my video give it a quick thumbs up and don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you